I think we're live. I do. I think we're live. And I think my microphone's on. <laughs> and I think all kinds of interesting things are happening. Good Sunday morning to you for the next couple of seconds. And then it'll be good Sunday afternoon to you. How are you all today? I hope everybody's well and staying safe and uh, and finding the good and being the best and treating life with love. I hope you're doing all of that. And I hope life is treating you back with lots and lots of love. If you're here, check in. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rose Maria. Yay. Good morning. Um, I trust you can hear me. My microphone says that it's on. Um, and everything says that it's a go, which is just delightful. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm excited that you are here. Good morning, Heidi. How are you all today? How are you holding up in this um, interesting time we are living in? And it is that, isn't it? I mean, if nothing else, it is interesting. We don't know from day to day exactly what's going on. Happy Sunday to you too, Dana. The uh, first few people to sign in show up on my board, and then it just kind of freezes. So, you know, if you if you come in and I don't say good morning to you, it's because I don't know you're here yet. But my um, trusty assistant will, as soon as her computer starts working right right now, she's over there sighing at it. I'm smiling at mine because I think we got it together this morning. Uh, let's. Good morning, Kirk. Good to see you. Can you all hear me? Somebody just say, yeah, loud and clear or something so that I know everything is working as it should be. Because what I can see of my um, engineer off the side of my peripheral vision is that she's frustrated and her computer isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. She's making faces at it. So far, that's all she's doing, and I hope it stays with that. Oh, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Loud and clear. Thank you, Rosemaria. Yes, Heidi. Thank you. Good. Good. So, here we all are this morning. This, well, now, okay, now it's officially afternoon. I'm going to have to um, click into afternoon mode. I'm not sure how that's really different. But, uh, but I can say good afternoon to all of you. And... Uh, Jennifer's there. Jennifer said, finally, I found you. Was I missing? I hate when that happens. I like to think that I'm always relatively easy to find. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I, that's, oh, you know, I'm kind of afraid to click anything that's here because weird things happen when I do that. So, I think Hack is finally up with us. Mm -hmm. Yes? And, um... And she'll keep me informed of anything I really have to know about this morning. Now, if this was a normal church service in this spot, um, I would probably do a little opening meditation, and then there would be some music. I will not sing for you, and those of you who've known me for any length of time know the reason for that. I talk good. I don't sing so hot. Um... Except, you know, maybe happy birthday, but I've had a lot of practice doing that lately. Um, but let's take a minute while people are joining us and, and do a little just welcoming, let's get centered meditation together, shall we? Shall we? I like that. So let's take just a moment um, and be here now. Thank you, Ram Das, for that. Be here in this space that we have created. Be in this spiritual community to, together. Be here, wherever that is for you right now. Be here now, together together with our inner wisdom, together with each other, together with the spirit of creation. 
where two or more are gathered, that spirit is amped up. It is multiplied. It is not just present, it is holy, holy present. And so we recognize that within each of us, within our environment this morning, wherever we may be. We know that right there, right here, God is, and all is well. And we simply let that be so. And so it is. Let's see. Oh, I am really... <laughs> Maybe if I just play with this little bar, I can see a few more people. Yeah. I like that. So, how's it going? So, Donna, it was hard to be here today. That kind of day already? Already? Oh, maybe. Let's see if we can't make that better. Let's see if we can't find some reason to be really present in this day really present with one another, and more importantly, really present to that inner voice that can give us guidance always, that can show us the way and can make the way easier. I'm not going to say make it easy because I'm not sure that that's ever the right thing for us. I know that in my life, in my experience, some of the greatest growth and some of the most amazing, miraculous things have come out of what have appeared to be very hard moments, very difficult times, times when it looked as though the world as I knew it was crumbling around me. And yet, what I have learned, if I have learned nothing else in my life, is that my response to that always lifts me up, always takes me at least a rung higher in the ladder, oftentimes more than a simple rung. And sometimes that, that feeling that we are just barely clinging on and climbing or just holding on to where we are, Sometimes that feeling is caused by that thing within us that is saying, go higher. Don't cling here. Go higher. Aim for something bigger than just a sense of normalcy. We've all kind of lost that recently, haven't we? That sense of normalcy. I mean... If you go out now, everybody's wearing masks. You can't even tell for sure who everybody is. It's, it's as though we're covering up what we want to say to one another. And here's what I know. We can say it even if we're not face to face. We can say it even if we're wearing a mask. If the words come from the heart, let them be spoken. If the idea comes from the spirit, let it be expressed. But for now, yes, of course, I'm reading Heidi's. Heidi says, this is wearing on many of us, wearing thin on many of us. Please help clear the fatigue. But it's tiring. I had one of those days Yesterday, where I just thought, I'm tired. I haven't even done that much, but I'm tired. This is difficult, adjusting to a new normality. It takes energy, and, and there's very few places most of us can go to try to get away from the heaviness of all of it. I hope this is one of those places for you. I know it is for me. So here we are. Let me just...
begin. Let me share my thoughts for today. And let's see where that takes us. And in the meantime, as questions come up for you or as you have comments, go ahead and, and put them in the, in the chat boxes. And let's see what we can do. For now, relax. I got you. Be here now, even if it is somewhat difficult. But trust that it's going to get better. So, my, um, my resident redhead and lighting per person and uh, author now of I think she's working on her 22nd book and just finished her third calendar for Llewellyn. I mean, she's busy, but you all know her. She's busy. Anyway, she was listening to an Andrew Harvey webinar um, a week or so ago, and I was eavesdropping because I had thought about signing up for it, but I didn't, and, um, but he caught me on a couple of things, and he covered a lot of great material, so I continued to eavesdrop and finally realized that um, I was taking notes, and I probably owe him something for all of that, but I'm going to share it with all of you, or at least the part that I the most notes on. He covered a lot of really, really great material in this webinar, uh, but he presented four key areas to facilitate enlightenment in this in darkened time. The first thing he talked about was calming and clearing, and he presented an amazing meditation that I borrowed already for one of our Wednesday night sessions on Facebook Live. It, it was so soothing and calming and people were saying it brought them to tears, but good tears, tears of, of release. And I think that's the best reason to cry of all. The second practice that, um, that he talked about was reciting the name of God which he called the single most valuable tool of creation. I love that. I particularly liked it because I think it was the, um, just days after I had talked about what is your name for God and the fact that whatever name we use, if it is personal to us, if it takes us to that place of the awareness of the presence within, then it is the name of God for you to use, at least for now. The third thing he talked about was a Sufi tradition, which he called the most powerful prayer of protection. And I will likely borrow that idea fairly soon as well, because it is indeed powerful. But I've been holding back on the fourth thing he talked about until now, because my heart just told me that this is the perfect time to talk about it. We have all been talking so much about the coronavirus. And two, nearly two months now into quarantines and lockdowns and lockouts, we still don't know as much as we would like to know. We still have so many unanswered questions. Where did this all come from? Why now? Is it a conspiracy? Are they doing enough? Am I doing enough? How safe am I, really? How safe is my family? What are today's numbers? Is this a symptom of something else? Is this thing that I'm feeling a symptom? Should I get tested? What if I get it? What if I can't pay my bills? Will I survive it? 
And what about my family? And what about my future? So many questions, so many. Harvey strongly suggested that there are other more important questions, honestly, that we could be asking ourselves that might, in fact, not just be more important, but maybe more productive. Not so much, will I survive? Because, my words, if we don't, there isn't much we can do about that. But if we do, then there are some really important questions to ask. Starting with, what am I living for? Why, with the numbers climbing every day, why am I still here? Now, if you've been listening to me for any length of time at all, you know that I have always contended that if you are still here, God just isn't done with you yet. That regardless of your age, you still have important work to do on the planet. So the first question is, what am I living for? What am I being called to do? Am I doing it? Am I not doing it? Do I even know what it is? See, I'm not saying that those who have died because of this virus did not have important work to do. Please do not hear that. We know that many of them were already doing very important work. Many who have the virus are still continuing to do very important work. A lot of that towards saving our lives. I'm not talking about them. What I am saying is that if you are still here, and if you can hear me, you clearly are still here. If you are still here, then what are you living for? What are you being called to do while you are still breathing? Harvey suggested that the second question may help you get some clarity. It comes from the recognition that if we really want the truest answers, the honest answer to the first question about what we are living for, many of us will have to go deeper than we have ever gone, deeper within to discover what we are living for. And we will have to come at that point, face to face, with the presence of creation within us. Not just the whisper of what we might be, what we have hoped to be, but the very source of this still, small voice. The essence of who we truly are and might yet be. So the second question is what will I learn from this confrontation of, with God at the deepest level? Well, my, what might you learn? What might you be led to become? Bigger question. Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone to become that? Most of us are already way out of our comfort zone anyway. Are you willing to go farther? Then Harvey took an unexpected turn by more than just suggesting that this doesn't have to be a traumatic event, it doesn't even have to make you miserable. In fact, the next question he asked was how can you tune in to your joyous self, your joyous self, to help all of humanity survive this era of uncertainty? How can you be love in action during this life and death confrontation? Hmm? 
he suggests three practices to get us there, wherever there may be for you. The first is to connect with that part of you that is connected to creation. That part of you that is the source of your deepest imaginings and your greatest knowing. That part that speaks to you in the sometimes still small voice and sometimes booms like thunder. That urge that will not be denied, that, that prodding that cannot be ignored, that part of you that dreams dreams and has visions and knows what the world was meant to be and may yet be. Connect with that eternal and immortal essence within you and listen. Listen deeply. Listen without judgment. Listen with an open heart and an open mind. Listen and heed what the voice is saying. What I know is this, it may not come immediately, it may not be terribly clear at first, but it will come if you keep turning to it. It will come, and it will answer, and you will know. And then says Harvey, once you know, love bigger. Where have you been holding back? Where have you been denying love? Where have you given less than you could? Where have you closed off your heart for whatever reason? And where can you open it again and let love express itself? It can be simple. It can be easy. It doesn't have to be a gigantic gesture. It can be a telephone call, or a quick note, or, or even an email. You can ease into it. Start small, but love bigger. Stop withholding. The world needs your love. And it needs it now. Reach out. You don't need to go out. You can stay inside and love more. You can learn to love greatly. All it takes is a little practice. And most of us have some extra time right now to do that practicing. Harvey says, ask yourself how you can be love in action. Ask yourself, what is the most effective way for me to express my love during this time? What I know is that if you are busy expressing your love, you don't have time to worry. You don't have time to get all tied in a knot. You'll be much too busy loving Ask yourself, how can I reach out of my spiritual comfort zone and share my love with the world? Again, go within. The answers are there. Just waiting for you to ask the questions. That is, I think, the real meaning of knock and the door will be open to seek and you will find. There's not a physical door hidden somewhere on the planet that we are meant to find, waiting for the lucky few who come across it. There is only the door to your own inner sanctum, your own holy of holies. And then Harvey tells us to care deeper. How we do that will be different for each of us. 
how we respond to the call to care will ultimately be determined by our ability and, and our willingness to be spiritual activists. Our willingness to take action and actually take steps to respond to the call. I believe that to care without taking action is sympathizing but it's not caring. To care requires that you do something. It means putting yourself in the game. It means getting up out of your sadness and your frustration and taking action. Write letters to your congresspersons. God knows we've got plenty to say to them. And it's far more effective to say it that way than it is to yell at the television. Help out at a food bank. You can wear a mask and gloves. Volunteer at church. Even an online church, I'm sure, can find a way to use your help. Donate what you can. Grow a victory garden and expect victory. I don't care what you do. God doesn't care what you do. You care what you do. So do something about what you care about. But do something, or the caring without taking action will weaken you. Open your heart. Open your mind. Ideas will pour out. Do not be afraid to care. Be willing to be transformed. Be willing to turn the fear and the pain and the uncertainty into a kind of transformative alchemy. Painful events, uncertain times, can yet bring out the best in all of us. Can transform the darkest human emotions into an incredible lightness of being. But we have to take action. We have to decide that we will be bigger, we will be better, we will, we will do more. We can, in times like this, come face to face with the God within us and discover our own innate power to create a whole new way of being and in the process create a whole new world. If you are willing, if you are courageous, if you are willing to head in the direction of what you are meant to be, Things will change. This is a process that will take you there. There are other processes. This is only one. But I believe this one could be truly effective. And somewhere in that good book, it says that God will not give you more than you can handle. So when you say, yes to that still small voice, to that urging, to that desire. When you walk through that first door, it may not be a hum humongous change. It may just a, be a slight variation from who you were before, who you are now. But look around. Because what I know is that somewhere in that slightly new reality, there's another door, another place to knock, another opportunity to say yes. What there is right now is an opportunity to say yes to your purpose of the moment. When we are still, when we are open, it will find us. but we have to go beyond where we are now.
I was reading somewhere the other day that Deepak Chopra's perspective on the current global pandemic is that we are grieving an old way of life. And that is a normal human reaction to sudden, unexpected change. And we are, I think, entitled to our grief. But can we, individually and collectively, afford to allow our grief to paralyze us? To everything there is a season. That's in the book, too. There is a time for tears. There is a time for grieving. And perhaps we all need to cry some. We have all lost something, someone, some place, some way of being. And some have lost much more than others. Some have paid with their livelihood. Some have paid with their lives. Some have paid with things the rest of us may never understand. Yet if we are honest, we have all lost something. And so we all grieve. But even in our grief, we must come to recognize that now is the moment to reevaluate. To reevaluate our lives, our habits, our existence, and ask ourselves, what is it we want to live with in the future? Change is upon us. I don't believe that our world will ever be quite the same, and I think some of that is very good news. How we accept and handle that will write our future. And our future may well depend on what we decide we are living for. So I ask you again, what are you living for? What is important to you? What do you value? And what price are you willing to pay for that? What will you learn from all of this? If you learn nothing, then I pray for you. For there is much to be learned. And if you learn much, then I pray that you will accomplish what you realize is yours to do. Connect with your higher self. You managed to set this time aside. Set a little more time aside and connect with your holy self. Connect with your divinity. Determine what it is that is yours to do. It doesn't have to change the world. It just has to change your life. It can be your purpose of the moment. Love bigger. It costs you nothing. But it is priceless. And it will change you, and it will change those you love, and it will change those you will learn to love. care deeper. Don't just pay it lip service. Don't just talk about it and don't expect someone else to do it. Follow your heart. Follow your words with your actions. And go deeper. Go way down deep. It's safe there. Become the person that you were put here to be. What are you living for, if not for that?
These are the times that try human souls. <laughs> Indeed. Will you be transformed by this crisis? Will you rise up and become God's dream of you? Why not? What do you have to do that is more important? What else are you living for? I want to thank you all for being here today. I say I show up because you are here. The truth is I show up because I learned something every time. I am grateful for each of you, for each and every one of you. You show me my purpose. And I am blessed beyond measure. So I'll be back here next Sunday, same time, same channel. I hope you will be too. If you miss me during the week, I'm also here on Wednesday nights at 7. This Wednesday I'm going to talk about using God. I found something that seeded that thought. It should be interesting, don't you think? And you can find all of these talks on YouTube and on the Relevant Spirituality site, www.relevantspirituality.com. And on the Relevant Spirituality page on Facebook and uh, on my page, it just goes on and on and, <laughs> and on. <sighs> So here we are. I hope your day is better because you've been here. I hope you feel a little lighter. Remember that we keep this posted on, on this page and then move it to all those other places as well. So you can always listen to a replay. I want to thank those of you who, and, and the number seems to keep growing, so thank you, thank you, thank you, um, who share the videos and put it on your timeline or share it to other people's. Invite them to come. You know, you, can, you can't force them, but if they're ready, they'll hear something, and they'll come, and you will have changed their lives. And what more important work do we have on this planet than that? Jennifer says she's sharing this in a watch party. Jennifer, thank you. And and hello, everybody that's there. Thank you. Thank you for inviting people. It makes such a difference. It makes such a difference. Hi, Betty. Hi, Steve. My goodness, the gang's all here this morning. Peggy and Ellen are there. Ah, there's Peggy. Will you repeat this? Oh, gosh, what would you like me to repeat, Peggy? Um, the talk will be posted, so yes, you can absolutely hear it all, all over again, literally moments after, after we close. It, it'll all be right there for you and anybody else that wants it. And then I move it immediately over to the Relevant Spirituality page on Facebook, and then it takes me just a little bit longer to get it to the Relevant Spirituality webpage and to YouTube because that involves some techie stuff that I'm kind of slow at. But I'm getting it. I'm getting it. As of the start of this talk, every other talk was up there. And on the Relevant Spirituality site, there are even some older talks. So feel free. If you miss me, I'm all over the place and happy to be there. It's certainly my purpose of the moment, and, and you show me that. And you prove that to me, and I'm so very grateful. 
Dana mm -hmm. says when she thinks that she has a balance between the stuff that people are talking about that she knows and respects and then she begins to doubt her own inner voice. She can see both sides, so it's challenging. Listen to your own still small voice. And sometimes it's not as terribly different than what other people are saying. Um, sometimes it's a variation on the theme. I basically became a minister because I sat in the sanctuary listening to a minister that I loved that had changed my life. And my still small voice said I wouldn't say that that way. And I challenged it and said, well, what would you say? And it said something that rang true for me. Listen to your own still small voice. Make sure it's not somebody else's voice. Make sure it's not one of those members of that committee that's in there to test you. And I really do think that's what it does. Because it wants to keep the status quo. You know that talk very well. I'm sure you do. Um, you know, we have a swamp keeper that likes to keep the swamp. He's an old guy. Kind of reminds me of the guy at the door of, of the Emerald City in The Wizard of Oz. Not coming in. Not no how, not no way. Not that new thought. That's going to screw things up in here. That's not still small voice. Go deeper. But when you know you've heard it, and you will know when you've heard it, it doesn't sound like anybody else, except maybe you. When you've heard it, then follow that. And ask yourself if it's... See, what I believe is normally true is that the still small voice doesn't ask us to do anything that's going to screw our lives up. Change it, perhaps, yes but not screwed up. It will only make it better. It's the God voice within us calling us to be what we are here to be. What greater call is there than that? You know, there's, um, most of you know if you've been listening that, uh, that I have, have been reading tarot cards and, and I love them and there's a judgment card and it's really probably my favorite card. I get excited every time I see it. And on the surface, on the surface, it's the last judgment. It is Gabriel blowing his huge trumpet and bodies rising up out of the grave, which sounds pretty morbid, but it's not. It's really quite a beautiful card. I get excited because I finally realized that what that card is about is answering the call. What that card says in a reading is you are being called to something, answer it, and all the rest of this army of supporters will rise up to help you. Answer the call. I get excited every time I see it. Every time I draw it, I'm, I'm renewed by it. Answering the call is the most spiritual thing that we can do. And isn't that what? Might it shake the ground you're walking on a little bit? Yeah, yeah, it might. Usually does. But when the ground settles down, you'll be in a better place. Trust that. <sighs> Thank you, Jennifer. I see your comment. There is so much going on in the world that we can't or possibly don't understand. Probably a great deal of which we don't need to understand. That's somebody else's to do. Remember my theory. There is what is yours to do, there is what is God's to do, and then there is what is other people's to do. Don't confuse them. And if it seems too big and horrendous for anybody to do, well, that's definitely a God job. Pray. But pray affirmatively. Don't pray begging. It doesn't serve anybody. Those of you who have children, or you've been around children, I, I love cute little children. I do. Had three of them myself. And four grandchildren all of whom are now practically bigger than I am. That just blows my mind. Anyway, 
I'm not fond of children when they whine. I think there's a way to ask for anything you want in a positive, wonderful way. Don't whine at me. It just irritates me, and I don't want to do much for you when I'm irritated. Do I? Did you? Do you? So don't whine at God. Ask affirmatively, and watch what happens. Stay calm, and carry on. That's where that came from. I've had a lot of little enlightening moments um, in the past couple of weeks when you suddenly realize something is there all along and you just didn't see it. I, I call it the shell and the shell sign thing because I was well into my 30s before I realized that this thing behind where it said shell gasoline in great big red letters was a seashell. Some of us are slower than others. There are a lot of things we don't know and a lot of things we don't see and a lot of things we don't need to know because it's not ours and a lot of things we don't need to see yet. I believe when the time comes, they make themselves clear. So, shall we pray? I think my techie person was writing me a note to do that because she just put it down and stopped writing. It's pray time. So let's do that. Together, because together there is more power. Together it is amped up. Together we shout it out, but not whine it out. Together we make it real. Join me, if you will. Close your eyes if, if that makes it feel more personal to you. It does to me. Or just soft focus your eyes if that works. And be here now, gently, open, with an open mind and an open heart we approach creation. And we know that within that, within creation, within that which we call God, or Spirit, or Life, or Allah, or any one of the 10,000 names of God. That within that is all knowledge, within that is all creation, within that is everything. And so each of us now, in our own way, calls to that. calls forth from that, that which we most desire to become what we are living for. If it is health, let us call that forth. If it is wisdom, let us call that forth. If it is joy, let us call that forth. Right now, in the peace of your own surroundings, in the quiet of your own mind, call forth that which you most need, most desire, most long for. To become that which you are living for. And now expect that. As it moves from creation directly into your heart and mind. Expect that to be your new reality. You have taken a step across an invisible threshold. And if you will allow it, you will never be the same. 
You will find answers coming to you that before seemed hidden. You will find doors opening that seem to be locked. You will find opportunities presenting themselves that you never even dreamed of. For you have been called and you have answered and now you rise. Rise to the call. And you will find yourself loving bigger, caring more deeply, and becoming what you have always been meant to be. My heart is filled with gratitude and an appreciation of how each of you will make a difference in your world, which is also my world. And so I thank you. And I thank God for you. And I thank life for expressing itself ever more fully through your words, your deeds, and your prayers. There are no words big enough. So I simply say thank you. And let it be so. And so it is. Oh, and aren't we glad that it is so. Next Sunday, same time, same place, Wednesday, if you miss me. And um, all the usual places, if you just kind of want a little extra hug or a spiritual nudge during the week. I'm here for you. Thank you for being here for me. <laughs>